Hey everyone, you know avalanche conditions right now are in the uh, moderate to extreme range. I'm going to show you something that you need to do before you even walk out the door so that you can stay safe in your next backcountry adventure. That's coming right up. Perhaps the most important tool you can have before heading out is your computer. It's here that you'll find all the information about snowpack analysis and avalanche conditions. And that's kind of what our job is, is we're taking all of this information and we're trying to synthesize it down to something that the public can use in a, in a more simplistic fashion. And so if they take the time to go to the website at avalanche.ca and look at the bulletins, we're just trying to give them the nuts and bolts that they can use when they go in the backcountry. Despite all the information that is available and the countless hours public safety team members put into collecting this data and posting it for all to see, there remains a challenge to convince some groups of the dangers they face. It really is up to the individual. They get to control their risk and they have to choose which train they're going into. And, you know, it's been said lots of times that even professionals, we can't outsmart the snow. We're not that smart, nobody is. But what you can outsmart is the terrain. And what we do see, I think it's probably a combination of youthful enthusiasm and maybe ski movies and snowmobile movies that are much more aggressive these days. I think people are putting themselves in the terrain where probably they shouldn't be. And that's why we continue to have avalanche accidents every year. Jeremy, you were explaining that there could be three different things that could trigger an avalanche. Yeah, there's kind of the three bigs. The, the three big ones are rapid loading from heavy snowfall, uh, loading from wind, changing the snow from here over to here and loading from that perspective. And then the other one is, is warming. So warming comes either in rain or in sun and above zero temperatures. So if you have any of those three things, you should be on high alert for natural avalanches occurring. So as a backcountry traveler, I'm always watching for that. And we're sort of standing here looking at a, a couple of spots where we're going to see quite a bit of that. So up here on, on Tent Ridge, you can actually see the, the wavy texture in the snow. Right. And that's indicative of, of wind loading. So the wind is, is creating more depth, but also it's creating more density. And so when, again, when we have that more dense layer sitting on some sort of buried weakness, that's a recipe for avalanches. And then also over here on the part of Tent Ridge, you can see these gullies. Those are train traps where if you were in anywhere in those areas, you're going to be in trouble if an avalanche gets started and you could increase the depth of your burial because of the way that they're sort of confined features. So after reviewing the avalanche bulletin, there are specific tools you will require. A probe, shovel, and avalanche beacon. And most important, you'll have to require some knowledge on how to use these tools. The change in the tone here, as I'm getting really close, I actually want to get my transceiver on the snow and I want to let it do the work for me. It sounds like I'm getting really close and then it's going to get weaker. So I come back to the strongest signal I have and I'm just going to make a little bit of a side movement to essentially pinpoint the location. Okay, well, it sort of seems like I'm getting the best signal right about here. And that's right, that's where we're gonna use the probe. And in deeper snow, this is gonna go in quite some depth. Right. And you're gonna start off with a probe right in the center of your target. Right. And if you're not successful, you're just going to move about 25 centimeters away on each attempt. Okay. And once you feel something that's not ground, you can tell that that's ground. But if you feel something soft, then you're going to leave the probe in place. And then we're going to grab our shovel. Okay. Okay. And then you're shoveling. At this point, you know exactly where they are. So you're going to shovel as fast as you can. And your goal is to get down to their airway and clear their mouth. And there it is. There's our transceiver, which we've got the really strong signal on. You have to realize that if you're out in the backcountry with your friends, you are the rescue team. If there's an avalanche, you need to be equipped for self-rescue because you cannot wait for professionals to arrive. As professionals, when we arrive, we might be able to help you out with first aid issues and so on. But if you have somebody under the snow, you're going to be the ones that have the best chance of recovering that person alive. Remember, before you head out this season, check out the Avalanche Bulletin at www.avalanche.ca. 
Once again, that uh, website is avalanche.ca. Make sure you check it before you head out on your next backcountry adventure. Stay safe, everyone, and we'll see you soon.